With Python being added to Excel, there is a whole new world of possibility. And one thing I've been wanting for a long time is the ability to write SQL inside of Excel on data that lives in Excel. There's lots of circular references there, but basically what I figured out how to do using the Python add-in for Excel is how to then write SQL and perform all those kind of functions on your data that's already in Excel. I'm not talking Power Query, getting data from external sources or going deep into SQL Server or any of those kind of things. I'm talking SQL inside of Excel on data inside of Excel. And I realize I'm way too excited about this, but it took me a while and I got it and I think you're gonna like it. Let's go. Okay, I have some data here that I got from Kegel.com. It's just sort of sales data and the schema here is pretty standard. You have your order number, quantity, price, line items, sales, profit, all that kind of jazz. So I'm just gonna jump over to a sheet I've already created, click on my Python cell. If you forget how to do that, you type equals PY or go to formulas and say insert Python cell. I'll hit Control Shift and U to automatically expand the formula bar. First, we're using pandas, which is pretty standard, and that's because we're gonna do other things with it to pull the data from Excel into our Python environment. Then we have to import something called SQL Alchemy, and specifically, we're just pulling in the create engine method. So here, what we're gonna do is actually use this library, which is built into Python and Excel, to create a new database in memory with the data we pulled in from Excel, and then we can write SQL on it. And it's all really simple in terms of how to do it. So first off, we start with DF for data frame, pandas terminology, equals, this is the assignment operator, not testing if one thing is equal to another. And then we're gonna do Excel, open paren, and then we're going to select all of our data on our sheet here. Then make sure that you have headers equals true, because if not, your data frame will look funky and you won't be able to reference the column names later on when you want to work with the data. Now is the tricky part. Here we create an engine and we're actually using SQLite, which is a form of SQL that runs in memory. And we're simply using that SQL alchemy library to say, create this engine. Then with pandas, there's a function called to SQL. And that doesn't mean two SQL like language. It means two SQL as in two SQL alchemy, two SQL light, two my engine. And we're gonna give it a table name. We're gonna tell it how to do that, what engine we're using. In this case, it's the SQL light one. You also can use MySQL, SQL Server, others, but for this one, we're just doing it in memory. And then we're gonna say index equals false. We don't need that. And that is going to create a sales table of data from my data frame, remember DF dot in memory that then I can write SQL against. And to write that SQL, I need to do PD, which is my pandas library, dot read SQL query, and then my SQL query. And now in this case, I'm going to assign it to a variable called query result in case I wanted to do something there. I hit control enter, and you can see the array preview down below. And if you want to see how to do that, if you were just wanted to see the results, you can highlight of it, and you can click on it, or you can just type equals B2, the cell that I'm looking at, dot, and you see these options I have here, array preview, Python string, et cetera. I click that and you can see that it was able to pull that data in. Now this is just a select star statement, right? But now I can do all the things that SQLite supports inside of here and actually manipulate my data and come up with all kinds of cool aggregations and analysis. And now here over at sqlite.org, you can see all the stuff that this language supports. And there's all kinds of fun stuff like date and time functions, stuff to do with strings, there's aggregate functions, there's window functions, all kinds of things that you can do here that really just give you all the power of SQL inside of Excel. Okay, let's take it to the next level and do something that I just mentioned there. Let's create an aggregation. So the big first part of this statement here is essentially everything we already did, right? It's just pulling it in, creating the, the table in memory, and then uploading the data. Then we're gonna run our query. And here we're gonna say select, and we're using this function strf time. And this is going to allow us to create a version, essentially to truncate order date into year. So we can manipulate that using this function here, again, back on the SQLite documentation or all over the internet, you can find examples of these kind of things. Then we'll do a sum of sales and rename that as total sales from sales, this is our table, and we're gonna group by one, meaning the first column there. And then how do we wanna execute this? Using the engine that we created earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Enter, and I will hide that up. And then down below, we're previewing the array. You can see exactly the results right there. So 
that was a really simple way to do an aggregation. I could have done a pivot table. There would be lots of clicks involved. And if I wanted to do even more complicated things like window functions, like a running sum and all that, instead of diving deep into you know dozens of menus, I can just write the code if I'm familiar with SQL, which you definitely should be. So in this next example, we're essentially just writing a more complicated query. And in this case, what we're gonna do is bring back several variables. So we're bringing back deal size, the year, and we're parsing that out from the order date, the month, we're parsing that out from the order date, a sum of sales, calling it total sales, a sum of profit, calling it total profit, and then we're grouping by those first three things there. And then we have this having clause. And if you're unfamiliar, a having clause is like a where clause where you would filter something. If you had like, say a pivot table, you could do add a filter there, but the filter is being applied after the aggregation is happening. So in this case, we're saying status and we want it to be equal to several different results. So in is the way inside of SQL world where you can have multiple answers being equal to something. So where the status is in, shipped, or in process. I'm gonna give it the engine and run this guy. And now that that's done, I wanna do something with that data, right? I've spent all this time building this aggregation, this analysis, this data set or subset of data based on the logic I used in SQL Alchemy. And now let's visualize that, which is typically where we go with this. So here we're gonna use Seaborn, which is a data visualization library, which is really advanced. It could do many, many things that Excel natively can't. And we're just gonna build a, what they call a rel plot, and it'll make sense what it looks like here. But the cool thing about this is we're going to have X as month, and then Y as total sales, then the hue or the color of the different marks, in this case lines, are is going to be based on year. And then we're gonna have a different chart for every different deal size. So that way we can kind of see them broken out in separate charts all in one image there. I'll go ahead and hit control enter here. I'll hide that guy. And then when you get the output of a Python cell, it either returns an object like the one you see here where it says data frame, and I can choose what to do with that, or it can return the actual Python output if it's something like an image. And I do this for this one because then I can click this little create reference and bang, I've got my whole chart there. Otherwise, you're trying to resize the cells and everything, and it just doesn't really work that well. So this way, this chart here, or this set of charts, which again, can't be done natively in Excel, can actually be pasted into a new sheet. I can copy that, put it in PowerPoint, whatever I wanna do. And if the original data changed, let's say I had some sort of automation bringing new data into that original spreadsheet there, this would update as well. It would go all the way through that kind of waterfall of stuff and update these charts. So here, real simply, each different chart represents a different deal size, and you're looking at year over year sales by month. So hopefully that got you guys excited there about what's possible with this new Python add-in and combining that with the SQL Alchemy engine. Really cool stuff. I'm excited to see what you guys are able to do with it. And if you want to dive deeper into what Python can do, you have to check out this video over here to fully understand how to work with this and where you can even go beyond what I just showed you here. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here next time.